In this video, I'll cover the Extrude tool. This tool is used to make 2D objects appear three-dimensional by projecting objects toward a vanishing point. Before we get started, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also find a written version of this tutorial. The Extrude tool is part of the Effects tool group. This set of tools can be found toward the lower end of the toolbox and can be opened by clicking the small arrow in the lower right corner of whatever icon is displayed. The Extrude icon is the second one from the bottom. There is also an Extrude Docker, or Extrude Inspector, on the Mac, which can be opened by choosing Window, Dockers, Effects, Extrude. The options here are the same ones that appear on the property bar when creating or editing an extrusion. With the Extrude tool active, I'll click the object to extrude. To create the extrusion, I'll click anywhere on the object again and drag in the direction of the extrusion. I can adjust the location of the vanishing point by dragging the X or by entering vanishing point coordinates in the property bar. The extrusion depth can be changed by dragging the slider or by entering the depth in the property bar. If I want to start over or remove the extrusion, I can click Clear Extrude. If an object is pre-selected with the Pick tool, as I'm doing for this shape, I can activate Extrude and click and drag. By default, the extrusion Fill and Outline Colors and Outline Width match those of the object being extruded. The Extrusion Color icon in the property bar has options to use Object Fill, or I can undrape the fill which aligns the fill in different spots in each section. I can also use a solid color for the extrusion, or switch to color shading, in which I can set a start and end color. Changing the original object will also change the extrusion. I'll switch to the Shape tool, whose icon is just below the Pick tool. When I click the shape, I have nodes along the outline, which I can drag to move, or select and convert to curve and adjust tangency, or double click to add more nodes. Another way to create a 3D effect is to apply a bevel. I'll click the Extrusion Bevels icon and check Use Bevel. Adjusting the bevel height and angle changes the 3D effect to the front of the object. I can also turn off the extrusion and leave just the bevel. For any of the extrusion color options, I can set the color of just the bevel. To edit an existing extrusion, I can activate Extrude and click the extrusion. By default, an extrusion's vanishing point is locked to its object, which means that if I press the spacebar to temporarily switch to the pick tool and move the object, the extrusion remains at the same depth and direction from the object. I'll undo the move and press the spacebar again to go back to the previous tool, which was extrude. When I lock the vanishing point to the page, the extrusion will always go toward the location of the X. So when I move the object this time and go back to extrude, the X is in the same spot. The page or vanishing point icon can be used as a quick toggle between locking the vanishing point to the page or object. When extrude is active and I click a new object, I can start a new extrusion. To match the text above, I'll click Copy Extrusion Properties and click the extrusion whose properties I want to use. This new extrusion also has a page locked position, but doesn't use the same vanishing point as the other object, so I'll choose Shared Vanishing Point and click the first extrusion again. If I move the vanishing point, both extrusions update. There are six types of extrusions, which can be seen in the Extrusion Type dropdown. The default type has the original object in front and the extrusion going toward the back and growing smaller toward the vanishing point. The other two types with the object in front have the extrusion growing larger or staying the same size. There are also three types with the object in the back, so that only the extrusion itself is visible. With these types, I can choose to have the extrusion grow smaller, grow larger, or stay the same. In addition to closed shapes, Open curves can be extruded as well. I'll extrude this spiral, which by default extrudes just the outlines. 
but I can get a nice 3D effect by adding a solid or shaded extrusion color. Only one object can be extruded at a time, but an entire group can also be extruded. So if I want to extrude this entire house, I can select all of its shapes with the pick tool and click Group Objects. Now I can extrude the whole house. Lighting effects can enhance the 3D look. Clicking the Extrusion Lighting icon blocks the drawing, so I'll open the Extrude Light tab on the Extrude Docker instead. I can turn on lights in one, two, or all directions and experiment with their values to get the look I want. Finally, there are several ways to rotate an extrusion as long as the vanishing point is locked to the object and not to the page. I can click the Extrude Rotation icon or open the Extrude Rotation tab in the Docker, which shows a preview for a non-rotated object. Clicking and dragging this preview object rotates the extrusion, and clicking the Reset icon brings back the original orientation. Clicking the Axes icon opens a window where I can enter rotation angles. Z-axis angles spin the object around in 2D without affecting the vanishing point. Angles in the other two directions do move the vanishing point. I can also double-click an active extrusion to bring up the green rotation circle. Clicking and dragging outside the circle, while the cursor is a curved arrow, changes the z-axis rotation. Clicking and dragging while the cursor is inside the circle, and is a 3D arrow, moves the vanishing point as well. This brings us to the end of this tutorial on the Extrude tool in CorelDRAW. If you've been watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also find a written version of this tutorial.